Hey there, fourth graders. So today we are going to begin looking at how we can compare fractions. Comparing fractions is when we're looking to see which fraction is bigger or smaller or are they the same size, greater than, less than, equal to. We talked about comparing whole numbers at the very beginning of the school year. Comparing fractions is basically the same idea. You're trying to see are those numbers the same. Remember, we can have equivalent fractions, equivalent means equal to, or is one bigger than, um, greater than, or less than the other. Okay, so this very first lesson that you're going to do is where we're going to be looking at benchmark fractions to compare numbers. Now, benchmark fractions is just sounds something that sounds really funny, but it's what the idea is, is that these are fractions that you're much more familiar with and comfortable with. You are very familiar with the number one, right? One whole. And you're also very familiar with fractions that equal one whole. They have the same numerator and denominator, right? So it makes it really easy to see if a number is equal to one whole. If I said seven sevenths, well, that's the same numerator and denominator, so that's equal to one whole. But if I said five sevenths, well, that five is less than seven, which means that that five sevenths is less than one whole. If I said nine sevenths, well that nine, the amount of pieces I have, remember, is greater than seven. That means that nine sevenths is greater than one whole. Okay, so you're thinking about the amount of pieces in relationship to what we know about our benchmark fraction. So that's how we would do it with one whole. One half is a little bit trickier, but really not much because you are probably very familiar with fractions that are equivalent to one half. One half, two fourths, three sixths, four eighths, right? We keep going, five tenths. And you notice every time I say that, I'm actually write them down for you. If I have one half, two fourths, three six, four eighths, five tenths, six twelfths, I'm just going to stop here at seven fourteenths. What do I notice? If I take this number and multiply it by two, I get that. If I take my numerator and multiply it by two, I get that. If I take my numerator and multiply it by two, I get that. That is always going to be the case for a fraction that's equal to um, one half. So it makes it really easy to take other fractions and compare them to one half or to compare them to one whole, right? So remember, fractions that are equivalent to one whole have the same numerator and denominator. Fractions that are equivalent to one half have a numerator that if I multiply it by two, it equals the denominator. So let's look at this fraction. 3 eighths, and I want to compare it to 1 half, okay? Well, let me think. 3 eighths. 3 times 2 is 6, right? So that's less than 8. That means that 3 eighths is less than 1 half. Or I could also think up here, well, what's my benchmark fraction? 4 eighths. Three, if I have three pieces, that's less than having four pieces, right? If I wanted to represent this in a picture, if I make this like a pizza, that's really, see this is why drawing can be a little bit tricky. If I have three eighths, and then the same pizza, that's a, remember pretend it's exactly the same size, that Mrs. Long is a perfect artist, and I have four, Well, that's less, right? This one is less than this one because I have less pieces shaded in, okay? But I'm using what I know about the fraction one half to figure out if three eighths is bigger than one half or smaller than one half. So it's a really good idea to be very familiar with fractions that are equivalent to one half because that's gonna help you 
to determine where the numbers fall. You can think about your number line. You can think of, you can use your manipulatives, absolutely using your fraction strips. You can use that to help you. You can draw pictures. You can think all about all these things that we've been talking about with fractions. But when we're talking about benchmark fractions, you want to think what fractions are equal to one whole, same numerator and denominator. What fractions are equal to one half? The numerator is half of the denominator, and that's always the case. So it's really easy to compare numbers to those two things. So I'm going to grab your math book, which is sitting over here next to me, and I'm going to give you um, an example. So let's say I want to find fractions that are equivalent to one. I'm going to lit, or I mean, sorry, let me say that again. I want to find fractions that are less than one. Fractions that are less than one. I'm gonna list some of them to you. Okay. All right, so I have a list of fractions and I want to find the fractions that are less than one. All right, which fractions are less than one? Well, a fraction that's equal to one has the same numerator and denominator. So a fraction that is less than one has to have a smaller numerator than denominator. Think about this with what fractions actually are. If I don't have all the pieces, I don't have a whole. If I if I am looking at my pizza, and here's my pizza, and let's say I have eaten seven pieces of pizza, have I eaten the whole pizza? No, I've eaten less than the whole pizza, right? So that means that any fraction whose numerator is smaller than the denominator is going to be less than one. So all I have to look is at my numerator and denominator. 99 is less than 100. Six is not less than five. Seven is less than eight. 14 is not less than eight. Nine is not less than nine. 11 is less than 12. So if I had to select all the fractions that were less than one, all I'm gonna do is look for the fractions that have a numerator smaller than the denominator. If I have to select all of the fractions that are equal to one, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the same numerator and denominator. Now I mentioned it before, let me flip to a new page here. I mentioned in one of the other videos that I was gonna come back to this. Fractions greater than one. We do have fractions that are greater than one. If I have, let's say, nine eighths. I have nine eighths. Remember my eight tells me how many pieces there are. My nine tells me how many pieces are shaded in. So when I'm drawing my fraction, I have to draw eight pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I have to shade in nine of them. But Mrs. Long, there is not nine there. You're right, there's not. So I have to draw another hole, also split it into eight pieces, so that I can shade in nine total. So I shade in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've shaded in more than one hole, so that means that nine eighths is worth more than one. Anytime my numerator is bigger than my denominator, that fraction is worth more than one, okay? And in a couple of units, we're gonna talk about another way that we can represent these fractions that are worth more than one, but for right now, you just need to know that these fractions are worth more than one. So when we're using benchmark fractions to compare, we are thinking about one half, numbers that are equal to one half, fractions equal to one half, and one whole, what fractions are equal to one whole. And we can pretty easily figure out if a fraction is bigger than a half or smaller than a half, 
And the same thing, we can figure out easily if the fraction is bigger than a whole or smaller than the whole. If I have a fraction, any fraction, let's say I have 2 sixths, and I want to see is this bigger than 1 half or smaller than 1 half, I'm going to double my numerator. If it's still smaller than my denominator, my fraction is smaller than 1 half, right? 2 times 2 is 6, is not 6, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 is less than 6, so this fraction is less than 1 half. Let's say I had 5 6. 5 times 2 is 10, that's bigger than 6, which means that fraction is bigger than 1 half. All right? Also, another thing that we can think of when it comes to fractions, the closer the numerator is to the denominator, the closer that fraction is to one whole. If I have a pizza and I split it into six pieces, oh, I hate it when I do it like that, all right? And I've shaded in five of them, I've shaded in almost the whole thing, right? If my denominator is a lot further away, then that's a much smaller fraction. So we want to think carefully about what do we know about fractions? What do we know? What does the numerator stand for? What does the denominator stand for? That information is important and vital to you being able to effectively work with fractions. You really need to know what you're doing, okay? We're not just dealing with random numbers over numbers. These, these numbers stand for something. And drawing those pictures to help you is always going to be a great idea. Using the fraction strips to help you, always going to be a great idea, all right? But really thinking carefully about what do I know about fractions. Don't just say fractions are so hard, Mrs. Long. That's what I hear all the time. You guys, I've been teaching fourth grade math. Now this is my 10th or 11th year teaching fourth grade math. And for years, that's what I hear. Fractions are so hard. I hear it from students. I hear it from parents. I hear it from everybody fractions are so hard they're not they're not so hard you just have to stop and think what do i know about fractions what is the numerator the numerator is the number of pieces that are shaded what is the denominator the denominator is the number of pieces i have if those two things are close as close together if i'm shading a whole lot of the pieces that i have i'm shading almost the whole thing in if i'm not shading in that many then that's that's a pretty small amount right? Think about it in relationship to food, pizza, pie, anything that you cut into pieces. That's fractions. You're dealing with fractions there. If you want to eat almost the whole pizza, you want to eat a whole bunch of pieces, right? If you don't want to eat that much of the pizza, you don't want to eat that many pieces. So you're thinking very carefully about what you know, and if you consider that, that makes fractions actually pretty easy to work with, okay? All right, so in our next video, we're going to look at another strategy or a few other strategies that we can use to compare two fractions. So this is comparing fractions to benchmarks, either one half or one whole. Next time, we're gonna look at just comparing two fractions and some things that you can do for that. Make sure that when you watch the next video, you have your fraction strips ready to go because we are definitely going to be using those to help us. All right, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.